What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku, and I just got done a few days in Seattle, I'm in Washington still, a few days in Seattle, and now I'm headed out to Lopez Island, right in between Washington and the Canadian border. We have the San Juan Islands, and we're going to Lopez Island. Really? We're waiting for this ferry. We're gonna go get on that ferry, and we're gonna get, go to the island. Right. Uh, I got my car, you can see all the bunch of cars parked right there. We're just waiting to get on the ferry. We have just finally got on the ferry and oh man, the sunset is looking beautiful. Check this out. Right behind me, the sun is setting. Oh. All right, so we got to Lopez Island last night. It was too dark to film anything when I got here last night, but this island is absolutely beautiful. And we're staying at this boutique inn called Eden Wild Boutique Inn. And a guy named Anthony owns the place and he is actually a subscriber of mine. So he invited us to stay there and to experience Lopez Island. And man, it is beautiful. The water is crystal clear. The weather is perfect, like couldn't be any better. It's so, it's so nice. There was some fog this morning uh, over the island, just this low layer of fog, which is just a cool sight. And yeah, now we did some crabbing today, trying to make a crabbing video. Haven't had too much luck, uh, but I did just drop, drop in a pot right out there. Right now, I'm gonna go see if I can find some mushrooms on the island. Let's go. Some little mushrooms, just tiny white mushrooms. Doesn't look like an edible species. I thought I saw something on a tree over here. And this is what I was seeing right here. Little mushrooms. And I don't know if those are edible, I don't think so. Oh, so the other day we were fishing in the Puget Sound uh, in Seattle and Jocelyn caught this shark. Well, it's a uh, dogfish, spiny dogfish. And I think I'm gonna cook that up tonight. And we are, yeah, we'll, we'll cook it up and we'll show you guys. I think I wanna try to do like a braised shark. I'm thinking since it's kind of meaty. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> Whenever you decide to harvest a shark, always dispatch and bleed the shark right away. And then you're gonna gut them and skin them right away. And that's how you're going to avoid getting that ammonia flavor in the shark meat. So these guys are pretty abundant here, huh? Yeah, so spiny dogfish, uh, I know that it's controversial, obviously in a lot of parts in the world to eat yeah. sharks. Um, but spiny dogfish in the Seattle area, in the whole Puget Sound, are extremely abundant. The state actually allows a harvest of up to 15 per day. 15? Yeah, 15 per day. But yeah. usually I harvest like one a year or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're more of a nuisance here. Yeah. Uh, fishermen don't usually like them. I think they're awesome animals because I, I love sharks and all, all animals really. Yeah, it's like I do with leopard sharks back in the Bay Area. I'll keep like one one a year too. E exactly. Yeah. It's just something yeah. interesting to try out, and you know, as long as it's done as a, in a sustainable fashion and not no waste. I mean, we're using all of that fish. Yeah. Uh, then you know that's For okay sure. to do every once in a while. For sure. So we'll try a little experimental recipe with them tonight, and uh, see how it turns out. So join me for that. Well, check this out. Wow, we just just leads out to a beautiful, scenic, coastal view right here. All right, guys, well, I'm back at the inn and we're going to cook up that shark that I said, but I have something for you guys today. Oh, and uh, Anthony's letting me use his, uh, use the kitchen at the inn. This is it right here. Pretty nice. So I'll be cooking inside today. So I've actually used their knives before. This is a forge to table. So they wanted to sponsor a video and this is a sponsored video. And 
they came out with their brand new line of knives. Uh, they normally make Japanese style knives, but um, this time they said they went back to their roots, sort of where um, Alex, the owner of uh, Forge to Table, his grandpa first was making um, cleavers. That's what I have right here. I'm not much of a cleaver user. I told him, hey, I'm not, I don't use cleavers that much. But he's like, yeah, you know what? I hope you become one. I'm gonna send you one. And uh, he said I was gonna like it. So we'll see. But I'm gonna tell you my honest opinion about them. It comes in this nice, beautiful box that you saw. All their knives come in this box. Uh, really nice. And yeah, pretty cool. It makes for a really good gift. I know his other knives. I use his Guto all the time. I use the Petty Knife all the time. You've seen it in the videos probably. Uh, and yeah, I do like those Japanese style of knives that he makes because um, they're very they're very easy to use. He said this cleaver is made so not it's not just boom 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 butchering stuff, but you can also do like some fine dicing things like that. So we're gonna try it out. We're gonna cut a variety of things. I'm gonna give the knife a quick wash. So I did end up getting some Dungeness crabs. Uh, this will be a separate video because. You know, this is going to be a whole crabbing video by itself. We did get some. I'm going to just boil these guys up right now. Let's go back to the knife here. So this right here is the dogfish. I'm not going to fillet. I'm actually just going to chop them up in about maybe one inch. Oh, geez. That's sharp. That's, I didn't even need to do that much strength. That was sharp. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is too easy. I'm gonna do like this braised fish, braised shark, and pretend like I'm using beef, then I'm gonna use ingredients like, um, instead of uh, white wine, I'm gonna use red wine, like I, like I would with beef. And I'm gonna do a braise, because you know, shark is a lot more meatier than regular fish. So hopefully that turns out well. So I'm gonna get these nice chunks here. claspers of the shark you know if you know what that is you know what I'm saying <laughs> so I'm gonna take this is the skin on there still and this is the belly portion of the dogfish I'm gonna take the skin off let's see if you can do this skin some belly meat oh okay Oh, look at that. Perfect. Tomatoes. See how it does in that. Oh, very nice. I'm gonna do this one. I like it because you can do this, you know. Mm. You can literally pick everything up. And we're going to use a leek today. These knives are actually pretty good quality, you know, like the other ones that I use. They're decent quality, but they're, the, why, the reason I like them is because they're good, they're a reasonable price, good for the money. And they look pretty good too. Like I'm not talking about just this, uh, the cleaver, but they're gutal. They look really nice. That's, I like them. So these are our ingredients right here. Got our shark, got a, the vegetables that we just cut. So let's just take it over over here. We'll heat this up. 
little olive oil. Get that pan nice and hot. We're actually going to do a little braising here. First, I'm going to put the onions in. Put the leeks in as well. We'll get a little bit of color on that. I'm going to salt the shark. Get a little color on that. And then we'll put all these in here as well. We'll get a little color on them like that. That looks pretty good. I'm going to flip them one time. Got some cheap red wine, just whatever the cheapest I could find, really. And I'm just going to pour it in there. Oh, pour a little for Jocelyn, okay. <laughs> I'm going to throw everything else in there. Put all the carrots in there. Throw the tomatoes in there. Throw everything else. It's not bad, actually. The wine's not bad, she Very says. Drinkable. drinkable wine, that's good. I'm gonna put a little bit of brown sugar. I have this crab stock. It's a little add a little bit of this crab stock here. That should have some nice flavor. I'm going to let that braise. Okay, so once it's boiling, it's boiling. I'm going to just lower the heat. There we go. Let's see how it's looking. It's been about 15 minutes. Yeah, I think that's about done. Yeah. Carrots are soft. Look at Oh yeah, the meat seems very soft as well. All right, Jocelyn's gonna join me now. She's gonna eat her shark. Cheers. Yes. I love beer. That's good. This is kind of citrusy. What is it? Fresh hop, fresh hop hazy IPA, uh, Fremont Brewing. Mm. Straight from good. Seattle. It's pretty dry lunch, right? Yeah. Cider. Mm, pretty dry. Oh yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. All right, let's try some of this shark. Ooh. I have a feeling maybe it'll be dry, but maybe it'll be really good. All right, let's give it a shot. Ooh, it looks tender. It's very tender. The meat is very white. Whoa. Mm. Very soft. It's so soft. Not just like... Oh, it's like jello. It's like <laughs> jello soft almost. Oh. Do a close up and you can break it apart pretty easily. <laughs> oh, it's pretty hot, but I'm going to try to break it for you guys right here. It's it's so soft and tender. Oh my gosh. It's like the most tender piece of fish ever. Mm -hmm. Oh well, my gosh. That. No, not... I thought it was going to be firm. Not like this. Yeah, no. I was thinking maybe... It'll, I said I was, it might be, it'll be dried out, but not at all. Wow, this shark is like... Wow. Is this usually how mm. <laughs> It's almost tender like a, like a crab. I just had some Dungeness mm -hmm. crab. It's a little piece of it, and it's tender like that. My goodness. That's fantastic. <laughs> it doesn't really have a fish texture. It's just... No, it's not a fish really texture. Really soft. Doesn't taste like fish. Soft texture. Let me call over Anthony. Mm-hmm, you should, yeah. Yeah. Sharks are good. <laughs> sharks are pretty good. Well, obviously we can't do all sharks, mm -hmm. but this shark in particular is very abundant throughout the Puget Sound. And my final thoughts on the cleaver. What do I think? 
what do I think? Okay, so this, honestly, this was probably my first time using a cleaver. I'm not a cleaver guy, like I said in the beginning. Um, because in, in Japanese in Japanese cooking we don't use cleavers. We have a deba, which is um, which is you know takes the same place as a cleaver would. And to be honest, I prefer deba. Maybe because it's only one time I used it. Maybe it takes some time to get used to. Like when if you saw when I was trying to cut the vegetables in half, it's too big. Not my favorite knife, the cleaver. But I don't know. Maybe. I gotta use it for other things. Gotta do a hunting maybe, episode. Maybe a hunting episode. I gotta do some Chinese cooking maybe. It cuts well, this, this knife in particular. I didn't sharpen it or anything, just out of the box. Cuts very well, it's sharp, it's thick. You wanna do some heavy duty work, this is gonna get the job done, that's for sure. Um, What's the point of the hole? I don't know what the point of the hole is. I don't know, anybody know what, what that's about? Maybe so you can hang it, you know, hang it on the hook. Forge the table, yeah, thank you to Forge the table for sponsoring this video, but not my favorite. I'll stick with the Gyuto. I'll stick with the Gyuto and the Deba and my Yanagi, the cleaver. I mean, I'll try it. I'll try using it here and there. All right, let me know in the comments in what case would you prefer to use a cleaver over a Deba or a Gyuto? All right, yeah, let me know in the comments. But if you're looking for a cleaver, man, Forge the table, I mean, this seems, uh, this seems like a damn fine cleaver. It looks good. The, the Kurochi finish, I really like the Kurochi finish. Handle, handle is, is great. Great in the hand, nice grip, all of that. Sharp blade, for sure. I'll leave the links in the description below if you guys wanna pick up a cleaver. But I use their Guto all the time, Guto and Petty Knife. I like those ones. Uh, cleaver. If you're a cleaver guy, check them out. Check them out, check them out, check them out. And they don't really have bones, you can, huh? Just no, because spine? it's cartilage, it's all cartilage. Mm. All sharks, are, you know, they don't have bones, it's all cartilage, so. Huh. So it's easy to eat. Even when you chop it up like this? Yeah. So easy to eat, because you don't get little bones in your mouth. Mm. Dude, that's great. Is that what you guys were thinking? Yeah. Because that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually really good. It's super tender, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like the softness of the meat. I can't believe. Yeah. What does that remind you if you if you eat that that meat? It's it's almost I, it's almost like a mushroom, isn't it? Like a mushroom? It, yeah. Oh like yeah, soft, I can see that. Yeah, like, like soft. In a good way. Yeah. In a very yeah. Good way. Yeah, I can see that. I was saying, like, you can pro probably fool people that it's crab meat. Yeah, yeah. you really could. Yeah. You totally could. <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy how tender it got, actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> awesome. Well, also, guys, links in the description. If you guys want to stay here at the Eden Wild Boutique Inn in Lopez Island. Awesome, beautiful island, as you saw. And... We'd love to have you. Anthony is great. Absolutely. He's an awesome guy. <laughs> he, will, uh, he will tell you what's up all around the island and show you a great time, really. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Peace.